Yep. Perfect. Thank you. And so we take those frames that are unsubstructed dot files and you see the sketcher upload the data. And the first what we do, we have a top trace here and it tells us the first information how the illusion and this basically tell you where the peaks are. Uh, let's just get rid of the radius of duration first and just have just only the trace. Let's do it again. So this is basically uh, integrated ratio of background, basically tell you how the I0 can be also related to this, so how the signal from the sucks looks like. And already you see some two peaks here. Uh, first the question, what is the first, what is the second? And in this uh, column, uh, in this range, we're expecting the void, so it's aggregations. To confirm that, I all the time look at the moles and that you have access to two. So we bring the moles data too for this sample to see if it's really the aggregations. And indeed, when you have very strong signal from the light scattering, what is the red line? That's the report where you get, I will bring this report here. That's indication of aggregations. Uh, and UV also see a tiny signal. Later, the second peak seems uh, nice symmetrical. Uh, so we separate the aggregation pretty well. And then we have obviously less uh, light scattering because it's a smaller particle. You can see also here. In the next page, you can see uh, estimated molecular weights for those two peaks uh, from the moles. And that's exactly indication that something what is more than megadalton large, it's most likely aggregations or something unspecific. And then you have the main peak that has molecular weight so and so that you can read from this, uh, uh, from the molar mass here. So that's telling me that the first peak, I don't really, really focus on it, it's something huge. Let's focus on the second peak here. So what we do, we need to select the buffer region. And there's also MOLS is very useful to see how much aggregation and being affected in this region. And you see most likely there is not really so much aggregations in this region that's going over. So I'm able to use the buffer here before the peak or after the peak. Uh, let's just do the before the peak. And so that's my region where the buffer was selected now. And I hit here set buffer. When I set the buffer, you select the region that I selected. And first, before we're going to subtract the images, we average the buffers to give you only one buffer curve. That's basically procedural averaging. And we have the final buffer that we can use to subtract the peak. Now we need to select the peak region that we want to focus on. And that's basically right here. Uh, next step, we're going to set the range that we want to analyze and so basically subtract. This is by this button set range right here. So we select the frames 442 to 502. And what is the next step is basically now hit the button subtract. Before you hit the button subtract, I, I recommend to set the output directory where the, all the processing is going to happen. So I just go here. Can call it the new folder, or maybe I can call it webinars. So that's where my data will go. And let's just call the sample PF, or basically. <clears throat> and then I can click the subtract. He, if you have selected ever a sample file, he will basically uh subtract those buffer this buffer that was selected here for each frame and merge it in one curve you will not see anything here therefore you need to go to this tab here on analysis and sometimes i have a problem here that's the back so when you go here you will see the signal that you have the final curve This is this one. <clears throat> and he averaged 
or make a median too. So you basically have a two curves. Uh, it's up to you which kind of I use, but I just go for the average of those subtracted and merged frames. And now you basically have your final curve. Uh, if this worked well, you can look at the basic procedure before you go to the next sample, like the Guinea plot. Obviously, the Guinea plot seems nice and clean. It's linear, sample is not aggregated. And also, then you can do another procedure that we don't want to go right now, but just give you very shortly the idea about that you just go to the P of R function, what is the real space. And those calculators of the real space in Scatter are not designed for like whole range of a detector, so we're cutting the data. And also in your reports that I sent out, you may see uh, that I cut the data. To calculate the PRL function, and also I cut from the beginning few points, it's just to be more clean. And then you kind of estimate the Dmax. So you see this is overestimated, so the Dmax is about 120. Let's just put it back. And this is basically a P of R function for the single peak. Uh, and this is your scattering profile that you can further use for any kind of a modeling or other experimental procedures that you want to do or any other type of analysis. So that was very simple. Uh, everything was run well. You have separation of aggregation. You have a single peak. Uh, also, what I forget to show you, unfortunately, that my bad, before we go to the subtract, you want to see basically the radius of duration across that peak, and that's what I totally forget. So you click here on a signal plot, <clears throat> and you see across the peak, the radius of duration is pretty stable. So you kind of uh, sure that there is no uh, mixture of different species because the radius of duration, and this is basically no signal here, so that's why it's dropping down. Um, you can just do it this way. You can select here and in threshold uh, which RGs you want to focus on for better resolution. You can select here how much points you're gonna have for selecting the calculation, the calculating the radio durations, how many points you want to deselect from the beginning. Sometimes the points at the beginning of the curve are not clean enough. So this is kind of a better view that you see that your radius of duration is stable across the peak. Let's tell you you have one species and you kind of able now to merge this all frames that are here shown. Um, to be sure that this is nice and monodisperse uh, and homogeneous sample, we can also click on this next button here, the similarity, which tell you something about how the scattering profiles for each frames are similar. And so this is kind of a tool that uh, Rob Brambo implemented in the scatter uh, recently. And so basically the statistics show you that if you have the Durbin Watson scale that's just basically comparison of the scattering profiles between each other and how similar they are. I call it the similarity plot, in this case similarity plot here. If you have number two, the scattering profiles are similar. Everything's left um, to four or zero is, is off. So obviously you can see there is some region that are not similar, like those regions are not similar. But if you find Something like this, you can kind of select this region. Uh, you can make it shorter or even just those scattering profiles in this range are very similar. And then you don't even need to select this region here. You just click on one of those uh, uh, frames and you select the region for you for 60 to 478 frames are selected that's gonna be merged. And now we can click subtract. He's merging and selecting. 
and this is your final curve again. This, and again, you can do look at the guinea. plot the curve and also go further with data analysis. Again, you cut a couple of points on the beginning that you don't need and on the end. And you estimate the max, what is about under 20. And this is your PRR function. So this is again very simple case. Uh, let's go to something more difficult. And I seen that uh, there was a couple of questions after I sent the reports uh, why I have not scattering profiles. Uh, most likely, what's happened was that the sample wasn't present. I mean, you guys definitely check the concentrations, but we spinning each sample before we putting on our size exclusion suck system. And so maybe they aggregated over the time or precipitate. And through the spinning uh, procedure, we basically lose most of the sample. Uh, that could happen, and I go to show you a case where it's happened and how you can see it. Let's just clear this, everything, you can clear it, okay. We go back to the subtract. You can clear this tabs. All the data are now ready for the next. And that's gonna be a case where we lost the sample. We didn't lose the sample, but there was no sample present. Okay. Uh, we select the frames. Uh, put them here. Okay, and scatter put them. Uh, we click the trace. Okay, let's we'll just get rid of the RG. That's really nicer. So <clears throat> obviously, we're expecting peak somewhere here. Uh, you may expect it. This is your signal. Well, that's need to be confirmed again with the moles what it is exactly. This somewhere in this region is a void, and you don't see any peak here. And this is most likely the signal from the small molecule that's come on the end of the evolution. And therefore, we look at the moles. And indeed, uh, changing in uh, the fractivity index, it's the blue line. Let's tell you that's are the small molecule, they're coming on the end of the evolution. And already from the UV and the light scattering, that's, the, that's basically the green one, it's the UV, and the light scattering is the red one, you don't see any signal here. So it's just a little bit, um, coming on the end, that's, that's this region right here. Uh, but it's not enough, especially when you see the detector voltage, you wanna have at least 0 0.15 that you get something, uh, some detectable signal in a small angle scattering. So in this uh, sample, you obviously from the moles already you see that there's no signal. Even that when you scroll down, you see some bumps here, but this is not relevant especially because this is a, a relative scale. So there is some signal, but it's not enough according to the absolute values of the detector voltage. Um, and there is some aggregation still present, but there is no enough signal to really uh, do any data processing here. Uh, I had a question from uh, one user, I think it was uh, Justin. He was like, have you ever seen such a MOS? Uh, he was probably confused with this pink line or pink dots. And that's, you see, that's the quals. Unfortunately, our quals uh, die. So we don't have a hydrodynamic radius. We expecting to have a new equipment soon, hopefully at uh, the end of the summer. And the moles will be back in order. But so far, we have only light scattering. Uh, diffractivity index and the UV. 
Uh, so from this sample, you already see there is nothing, so we can kind of do anything with this. This is uh, garbage, and we're gonna clear it again and do an next sample. And the next example will be a little bit more difficult. So I will go a little bit slower, and if you have a question, please ask. I'm gonna bring the frames, unsubtracted frames. Here, okay. Oops. Oops. Okay. I can close this. Okay, and again, the same procedure. I'm gonna trace this. And what we again see uh, from the previous sample, I expect this already, this is the aggregation peak uh, or something where it is very huge. Uh, this is uh, the small molecule and this is exactly what we expecting, where we expecting half our uh, molecule of interest. And already from the size, from the, from the shape of the peak, you see that it's very non-symmetrical, so it's very heterogeneous sample, and so you're expecting something, um, a multiple species in the peak. What is very useful for us, if you really want to have some help with the data processing and merging, to tell us what it is in the sample. You don't need to tell exactly the name, but tell us if it's a complex, or it's a DNA protein, or it is RNA, or it is protein-protein complex. So this is a, I think, I'm not really sure exactly now, but this is a protein uh, DNA complex, or protein RNA complex, uh, protein RNA complex. Uh, so, and it's a weak, we were additional information, what I got for this is a, a lower affinity, so we're also expecting that there is some separation of uh, complex and non-complex state. So we do again the same procedure and I will do it very fast. Uh, we, uh, in this case, now is the question which buffer region we're gonna select. It's also uh, the intensity is very low, so you will see a little bit more noisy data, but that's the usual case what you guys doing, very low concentrations, and, but we still can get a good information because we're merging multiple frames together. But before I'm gonna go farther, I will look at the moles again and see where the buffer region I wanna select. Okay, I'm bringing the moles. Okay, these are the raw data and you see strong scattering from Something what I call aggregations, that's uh, done based on uh, light scattering. Uh, you see barely some signal in UV. Oh, it's obvious uh, it's not material enough for UV, but a strong scattering in light, uh, light scattering. And then you have the peak of interest, and that's the small molecules right here. And indeed, the UV have a very similar shape as our uh, integrated sac signal. Um, and can go a little bit farther and see where I should post to take the buffer region. So the buffer before the peak will be more difficult because you see that the aggregations kind of go into the into the main peak of interest. So in this case, I will take the buffer from the back. It's right here, and that's somewhere here and I set the buffer region. What I do next, I average the buffer. You can close this window, it's average. And now we select the peak of interest. And we see how the rather duration across the peaks changed. Um, let me select it a little bit better. 
we want to see the RG, we're going to set the range and it selected 352 to 456 are the region that it selected. And now I can hit the signal plot here. Oops. So when you see something like this, because my threshold is a 0 0.6 and this is very low, low signal. So I need to lower the threshold to at least 586. This is this number right here. So that will be show me the RGs for the main peak here. And now I hit the signal plot again. And now we see the radius duration. And already from the radius duration, you see there is something going wrong. <coughs> and that's why uh, in this case, we're expecting some uh, separation, but probably not sufficient separation between complex and non-complex state. So what I will try to do first, very simple way, let's just look at the similarity plot. If I can find the region, at least in this main, uh, main peak uh, of the similarity that I have a similar Sachs profiles, and that's basically on a similarity plot. And when you look at the similarity plot, uh, there is really not a region that are similar. So all the frames across the peak are very, very different. You may try to find like, okay, this is similar, but you will not get enough signal for this such a low concentration. Maybe this one, but it's also a, a very tiny peak. So let's try just take this region. There are similar curves and similar profiles and just merge that a very simple way. Uh, we select, oops, no, let me say this one, no, this one, okay. And we do now, again, hit the subtract. Okay, uh, this is your signal. I mean, it looks okay. And sometimes, as you can see, uh, now my scatter frozen. So, what we normally do if something like this happened that nothing is working, try to click on something. We just basically close the scatter and start from scratch. Uh, it's gonna be fast, no worries. I'll just do it in a fast way again. Okay. And also, in this case, when I extend the, the threshold, you kind of see the influence of the aggregations in the beginning of this tiny shoulder here. So that's uh, also something we need to keep in mind. You can see how close the aggregations uh, are visible. If you look at the residual duration, they are going a little over 50. That's something was indicated that it's very aggregated. So you have separation, but not sufficient in this case. And as a game, we're gonna look at the signal plot. Uh, no, it's okay. It's just uh, sorry, the similarity. Okay, we see something that we can probably merge here. Let's pull it. A nice name. Again, you don't. Uh -oh. So 
this up. Uh oh. I think I lost. And Justin is sharing the screen. That's interesting. This is not what I'm supposed to do. Sorry. Mm, somebody kicked me out. Are you guys still there? I see that Justin is sharing the screen now, so I will kick you out, Justin. It's okay. Okay, I think you're all back. Okay, well, I can. Okay. Okay, are you guys seeing the screen again? There was some interruption in uh, probably in my internet. Is anybody back? Nope. I see everybody's still logged in. I see the Walter is on mute. Can you guys see my screen with the scanner? Uh, okay, perfect. So I continue. Hopefully, let's just please uh, raise the voice if there's some problem with the internet, which can happen too. Anyway, so now we have uh, just merge data for a region and just comparing the region here we can just merge this region and call it the tail and you will see when you compare that those two curves they are very very different okay and that's exactly where we start to work oh Somebody's raising voice. Nope. Hey, Justin, I will be unmuting you. Okay. Perfect. <clears throat> so that's the reason why we need to worry about this kind of uh, non-perfect separation, especially when you have a weak uh, complexes. So what we apply in this case, uh, you, you try to deconvolute and what will also increase the signal to rate, uh, signal to noise ratio if you deconvolute the entire peak and get the signal for the complex state and non-complex state, you also get a better signal because you're using all the frames instead of like parts of the uh, of frame that you collected. So for this reason, uh, we using program called RAW. Uh, it's called R I R A W. RW is uh, open source and free available. Um, and give a credit to Jesse Hopkins and um, basically Cornell Group. They try to improve this. It's also useful for general, like what the scatter is doing. I'm just much more familiar with the scatter because it's coming from Sybil's group. So, what we're going to do now before we open the row, I apologize for this, we need to get not the merge data, but all the frames across this entire region. Uh, we go back to subtract, and instead of here averaging sample file, we unclick it, and we will basically select the region that you want to have scattering profile for each frame subtract it and that's selected right here and then you unclink the average sample and then you can hit subtract when you go you see a multiple curves and you can also plot it if you are interested how that looks like or already by looking on the curves they are very different and so now is the question what we're going to do and so that is exactly what I call deconvolution. And in deconvolution, a uh, very user-friendly tool, it's in RAW. 
we gonna take uh, first we need to select the files that we want to use and let's go to our webinar subdirectory I think it was somewhere here yeah and those are the frames that we saved and we're gonna click on modify because you want to put them in a specific order okay these are my frames. You can again plot them here. Uh, here is the plot, and you will see that scattering profiles are really different. And kind of zoom in if you wish. Not necessary. Okay. Before you're gonna do deconvolute, and it's kind of confusing, but you need to click on manipulation that you want to do something with those uh, scattering profiles. And that's right here. You need to select all of those by clicking here. I mean, it's a learning procedure, but uh, I give you just only very fast uh, breakthrough uh, how to do it. And then you are in the tools, you have possibility to do so-called EFA, what is evolving factor analysis. Uh, it's first when you click on an EOA, you will see <coughs> intensity for all the old frames that you are here. And he also estimate automatically for you how many components, how many significant components you have across this elution peak. In this case, he estimate two uh, because all other components are here they have basically noise value and those two have a significant value they contribute to scattering profiles across the evolution peak and we just continue the pipeline with hitting the next here right here and so what this tell you you wanna he automatically already tell you where the component two is starting to be a significant but you can kind of adjust it if you wish. And so I will adjust this component two because this is the noise level. That's the, that's the red one line. This is the component one, this is component two. And you see, you barely can see the difference between uh, noise and the presence of component two. You can kind of slightly adjust this in this case too. But we're gonna also work with that a little bit. Yeah, it's a questionable. So there is here, here. Okay, and now we select the regions for the component one and component two, then one and component two, and the noise. And here, by clicking next, you already have the first insight um, what components look like. Uh, here on the bottom, you see the concentrations, contributions, and it's not directly about relative uh, contribution of the component one. That's the blue line. In scattering profiles, it is here. And the, the contribution of component two across the peak is the green line. And so as you can see, if you just merged this region, you still will have a slightly contribution of the second component. That's the unbound complex. And what we're expecting, component one is the bound uh, state, or in this case, it is protein, RNA. And, and, and the, the, the green one is the question, I don't know exactly the sample, but it's maybe the pro free protein or the free RNA. Uh, you want to also look at the mean error weight. And so you want to have it around uh, the chi square, supposed to be about one, what is the good fit. What's basically indicate when you take a uh, linear contribution of component one and component two, how good are fitting the each frame. These are the frame numbers. And you want to have the chi square about one to to have the good quality fit. Sometimes you see this kind of speak, spike here. 
because the last frames is so noisy that it's really difficult sometimes really really fitting the whole range but you want to really focusing on this main range here we can also zoom in it a little bit give you some idea so those are the frames from 1 to 70 and you see the chi is about 1 so you basically already very easy way define uh, the signal for for uh, the component one, what is most likely the complex and component two. You can play a little bit with the range here, how it's really changed. Uh, if you wanna really say, okay, I expecting that, that the complex state is not in the whole range like I'm showing here, but it's a little bit less. Uh, in general, there is not a real long, big changes. It's only the quality of scattering profiles because you're merging less uh, frames to get the component one. Uh, that, but if you see the chi is still in a one, you you're good to go. And also uh, the concentration uh, contribution of the components are not changing. So. So you can repeat it a couple of times and see how the scattering profiles indeed change. From my experience, it's not it's 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 a very stable uh, process. So if you if you define components number of components right after this uh, selecting where the components are contributing in a previous uh, graph, you basically by clicking here you already have the final final solution uh, and so now you are able not only um, you need to save this scattering profiles what is basically shown here and when you look at those scattering profiles more clearly they are really different oops uh, row also say unexpected error that's mean we're gonna do this again perfect happen Okay, I'm gonna do it very fast again. Mm. Mm. Yep. No, I wanna show the scatter later. The comparison of the merge and not merge. So I'm gonna do it very fast. Okay. Okay. Um. Here we go. Okay, and now we go here, select all of them, and do the single value composition again. This is good. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. Okay. So, <clears throat> now we want to save the scattering profiles. Those are shown here, and we obviously see huge differences here. Um, by clicking done, he will show the scattering profiles in a plot, in the main plot. You need to select that, and you can also focus on it and you see this is the component one the blue one and you save it and just give us some name and also you can save the smaller particle component two and 
you done here where you want to now uh, plot it in a scatter and that's exactly a trick that I want to show you because when you try it just by taking the saved component files uh, straight from the raw to put it in a scatter because those two groups don't talk to each other and the format of the data files are a little bit different as usual every you will not able to do it let me just give you heads up you just go here and try to put it there nothing happened and one of the reason is is because the format of data files coming from the row are very different when you open it in any kind of viewer you will see there is some kind of headers and a strange ends on a and so you need to delete those you don't really need those hopefully the next uh, version of the row uh, this problem is gonna be solved but those are tiny details okay good and now you can put them back here okay so but you will see here, those are your scattering profiles. <coughs> Again, uh, there is still some kind of noise on the beginning. Oops, I'm gonna show it here again. We wanna delete this few points here. Okay, so, and we justify how well we done. First of all, those are the data that you can call better signal to noise, and we can also compare uh, our component component one to our simple merge data and I will show you how important it is using the single value decomposition rather than merging a tiny region uh, a tiny region in the scattering profile uh, in the elution peak and that's somewhere here okay I'm gonna put that previous merge data right here. Okay. So those are two files. The green one is just simple merging of very tiny region over here. Uh, the the red uh, the 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 brown one is our deconvoluted uh, component one. Uh, you can scale that to see, first of all, they're very similar. That's good. Uh, sometimes the differences are extremely visible because in this case, you still have the peak uh, that is relatively stable. So you still have the component one in this is most uh, pronounced. So you receive a very, very similar curves. But what is also interesting is that the noise for our deconvoluted is less than just merging few frames here. And that's the beauty of the signal value decomposition, that you increase the signal to noise uh, ratio. Yeah, a question? This one? Oh, this is just noise. This is just noise. Anyway, so just only show you how difference will be, for example, the real space. Just again, cut the data. Okay, this is a large particle. Yeah, in general, you see that the Fourier transformation really is not capable to fit this data here and the high Q because the noise is uh, bigger than for the deconvoluted curve. 
So this is, uh, in this case, you need to cut the data more and get the idea about how the scattering profiles really are helpful. So those are uh, very useful tools. Uh, you can use it also for monomer dimer mixture. Uh, I have another maybe five minutes. Um, I can show you another example where the single value decomposition was very important. Uh, or you have any specific questions. Any questions? I think it was everything clear, or nobody is there. Uh, that would be funny. That's you're here. here. Show oh. us more. Okay. Okay. Everybody's there so far. Well, we have another maybe 10 minutes to show uh, uh, Walter is there, so I will show the Walter example. And go straight. Uh, I have to leave in eight minutes. Okay, that's exactly uh, what I need to show your examples. Uh, okay, we have a lots of water stuff here going on. Chasing lip. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. No, no, no. Okay, I think rather than chasing lab, no, what, what did I did for Agnieszka recently? That was, it was recently done. Oh, I know what you did it was, it was the primates. It was the primates for sure. No, actually that was XPA, RPA. Oh, uh, yeah. Like I have at the primates here, unfortunately, it is faster right now, but it's basically the same stuff that we did for XPA, RPA. Exactly the same, just a little different curves. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's a problem. Let me show the XPRPA, uh, another difficult problem. Okay. Um. Okay. Wasn't prepared for this one.
There we go. Now it's all good. Okay, we trace it. You see there is some double peak here. We select the buffer region. We average the buffer region. We select the main peak. Um, and that's also a complex of protein and DNA. And next we set the range. We do the signal with our G's. And obviously from the RGRGs, you see there is some uh, significant difference in the linear regions in the rise of duration across the peak. Also, you have some uh, very unspecific large stuff uh, before the peak. Uh, so let's just focus on this region where the main peak is. Uh, we can select it again and signal plot. And it's still this difference between 60 till 45, these are huge differences. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna call it webinar four. <clears throat> and instead of averaging, we're not averaging, we're gonna subtract. And those are the data. And just look at those data sets. Just by eyes, you see those are very different scattering profiles across the peak. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna take those data to a program raw. Okay. And we are here. Those data are right next to each other. Okay, we plot those again. And we go to manipulation. We select all of those. And we can go straight to the single value decomposition. Again, we find out there are, this is our peak. We see already a little shoulder as well. Uh, and we find there are two single components, uh, two main components. That's okay. In this case, the, the signal is so strong, so we don't really need uh, the beginning of end. So I just was trimming it a little bit to get uh, a better uh, signal. So it just only gives you which frames we're gonna use, but it's still just basically two components. And we click the next. Now we define where the second component is more significant, and that's good. We did it automatically for us. And click it here. And that's basically, this is it. Um, this is your um, a monomer dimer mixture of XPA, um, RPA. Uh, and this component one is most likely larger. It's on a beginning of the peak. Uh, you can also zoom in to see how the chi is. Again, it's about one. You can just play a little bit with increase this because I believe that the dimer is really extending the effects of, but in general, nothing really change in scattering profiles. So in this case, you see how much dimer contribution you have in this monomer, uh, and that's where it's very useful. And you see the signal is pretty nice, better than the case what I showed previously. And then you basically save those two scattering profiles. Um, by hitting done and let me just show you the PRR function on the end. Uh, we'll save the data first. Uh, that's the, sorry, I hit the wrong button, save. Uh, I have a mouse for that too. That's a good question. Component one and Save component two. Nope. We save those. Uh, as I already mentioned before, uh, where did they save? They are saved in webinar. 
so we go to webinar and plot those two components. We can clear those. And first, we need to clear up the headers. It's kind of annoying, but that's what we do. And we clear the header here too. Okay. Okay. And then now we can plot them and and see how the resaturation even looks like. This is a large, large. Uh, this is what is this is the small one. This is the big one. This is very unfolded partially, so you don't expect very clean resaturation, but it's good enough. Uh, and obviously you see the differences in scattering profiles they are dramatic and that's where you go from this point you just can analyze those uh as a, as a monomer as a dimer and we'll space just quickly and then we're gonna say goodbye hopefully for next time for the users they are interested in size exclusion sex technology what we're still developing here it's pretty clean. 